Hey, Brandon Lewis here of Embedded Computing Design, and we're here at CES in one of my favorite booths every year. It's the QNX booth, and I'm sitting with Grant Corville. How are you doing, Grant? Doing absolutely wonderful. Great to have you. And we're As in always. a <laughs> and we're in a Jaguar. What's yeah. the model? The Ma ja a Jaguar XJ. Great. Beautiful car. It is. It is it, a very nice beautiful car. Beautiful car, yes. And you're about to see, you uh, watching, those of you watching, just how beautiful it is. But probably some of the most beautiful stuff about it is the tech underneath the hood. Can you explain what QNX7 is and what's going on here? Absolutely. So we've just released or just announced our QNX7 operating system, which is our 64-bit operating system, the absolute most high-performance operating system we've ever released with more security features built in. We've taken the best of BlackBerry security, integrated that as part of QNX7. And QNX7, of course, is built on all of our safety pedigree. So automotive, ISO 26262, 61508, and industrial. So really rock solid operating system built upon our 30 years and 20 years in automotive, 35 years actually embedded um, and bringing that to the high performance computing needs of the cars of tomorrow and, and where we're going to see a lot more ECU consolidation and software content in the vehicle that's actually going to demand security and high performance. So how many bits is it? 64 bit Our operating system. We also support 32 bit of course. Yeah. How much do you see 64-bit uh, creeping its way into automotive platforms? It's coming. It's absolutely coming. So the next generation vehicles, the, the new programs, that's where we're starting to see 64-bit. Absolutely. So today's mostly 32-bit environment, mm -hmm. starting to see 64. And why do you think that is? Do you think it's because manufacturers are looking for more headroom for the future? Mm -hmm. Or do you think it's because of some of the ECU consolidation that's going on? Bingo, yes. Both of those, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. Headroom and ECU consolidation, which is exactly what we're showing here. So mm -hmm. that's absolutely a demand for the systems of the future. Future, mm -hmm. um, and well before even autonomous drive ECUs, the number of ECUs in cars, we all know it can go over 100 ECUs, mm -hmm. um, and they're looking at consolidating those into a much, much fewer, much smaller number, um, which will demand obviously higher performance processors and higher performance operating systems. And ultimately, we want to be the software platform for the car. Right. So, what's the consolidation that's happening here? So, what we've got going on here is that we have our Cutex car platform for infotainment and the infotainment right stack. Here. And we have our Cutex platform for digital instrument clusters running in the digital instrument cluster. Mm -hmm. And what's different that you don't actually get to see, it's, it's behind the dash, is actually running on one SOC. In this case, it's an Intel processor, but it's running on one processor, whereas traditionally, you'd actually have two processors or two ECUs. We're right. actually running on one. And how do we make that happen? Well, we make it happen through our software, but also the Kinex hypervisor, mm -hmm. which actually will separate and isolate the digital instrument cluster, which is a safety critical system in a car, from the infotainment system in the car. So we have actually have two complete uh, isolated environments running on top of our hypervisor, running on one SOC. So mm -hmm. there's your nearest term example, if you like, of what you're gonna see in production vehicles as well in terms of ECU consolidation. So they're completely separated um, and they get to operate independently and to the point where as part of our, our demo, what we'll do here is we can even reboot the infotainment system really? and you'll actually see the cluster keep, keep humming along. And really quickly before we get to that, you're in the process of safety certifying that hypervisor too, so for absolutely. automotive applications we're going to be okay. Oh absolutely, we've been through the automotive safety certs uh, twice now, we're going to absolutely certify the hypervisor, it's already underway, and the uh, operating system. Excellent. All right, should we give the demo a try? Sure, let's give the demo a try. We got a lot of things to see here. So full touch screen, obviously, and for anybody who's seen the, and you've seen these before, mm -hmm. um, full touch screen interface and whatnot um, that you can use. And obviously there's various settings and we have a couple handsets here that we've inter integrated to. Um, for instance, we've got a DTEK 60, obviously, from BlackBerry, so we can connect to that. Um, and it'll connect on the system and bring up the hands-free profile, etc. Mm -hmm. um, we also have Ford Smart Device Link as part of the, the vehicle, so we've done that complete integration. Um, what we've also done as well is, uh, for people that are tracking browser technology, um, we've actually integrated Blink, uh, which is the, the latest browser technology. Blink is now part of Kinex, uh car, the Blink mm -hmm. browser. Um, so again, latest technology there. We have a new Bluetooth stack from Mindtree okay. um, that we've integrated here as well. So number of new features, if you like, with Kinex car um, um, that we've integrated. Mm -hmm. And as well, every year we always refresh the user interface. Just right. to, so we've done some interesting things, for instance, here where we can, um, we can go full screen, and or sorry, we can flip the screen top mm -hmm. and bottom if you like. We can actually go full screen for the user interface. <laughs> um, obviously, we, you have the normal pinch to zoom and whatnot. Um, and if we wanted to go back to where we were, I can turn climate control on. If I went to the main menu, for instance, 
these are user interfaces that we design and what mm -hmm. we do is we obviously we provide all of that to the automakers to the tier ones and then they'll uh, develop their own user interface and their own components and they'll it'll be rebranded so that it has a look and feel in this case of a, of a Jaguar for instance right um, so you can navigate here through media for instance and oh, I'm gonna go over here for a minute back to where I was um, so again I could I could flip these around um, I can go here I can say connect to my phone for instance and I could dial my contacts etc and all the rest I could I also have voice rec obviously mm -hmm. which from a user interface perspective and, and with car connectivity um, I think that's going to become a much more of a dominant user interface mechanism as opposed to touch screens and whatnot I think you'll still have hard dials absolutely um, jog wheels and whatnot um, but user interface in terms of voice I think that's a lot more natural and you're gonna to start to see a lot more about that right and on the, I want to talk about the cluster, the cluster for a minute. Side, for, yeah. So yeah, so this is a cluster. We work with a company called um, Rightware for the cluster. And as you can see, we've got a lot going on here in the cluster. So again, you've got two panes of glass, but at the end of the day, it's actually, again, running on one SOC using our Cunix hypervisor, running our Cunix platform for safety, uh, or sorry, Cunix platform for digital instrument clusters. Um, so they're, again, completely isolated. And, and like I said, what's really new here is rather than two ECUs, you now have one ECU. Um, and if we talk about autonomous drive and whatnot later on, that's even more demand for software and of course more for uh, ECU consolidation. And an important thing here, I'm sorry if we already mentioned this, but obviously the uh, cluster mm -hmm. is safety critical. Absolutely. The infotainment system not so much exactly right. exactly yeah and that's why you absolutely need that separation that's why you need the iso 26262 certification mm -hmm. and as we i think as we all recognize um you're going to see digital well you're already seeing digital instrument clusters whether it's hybrid mm -hmm. so mechanical gauges and maybe a uh, display in the middle to what we're seeing here is full digital instrument clusters and even in some cars where you see a full digital cluster mm -hmm. instrument cluster the warning lights are actually leds okay <laughs> so one of the reasons, again, is because they're safety critical elements. So as part of our platform for instrument clusters, we can actually detect if something is displayed incorrectly, for instance. And I can I could simulate this here. So if I had a warning light come on. Oh, hang on. So there's, a, for instance, a check engine light coming on. We've actually detected that it's it's got some corruption on the display. Mm. Oh, you'd never see this in a production vehicle, so this is obviously for demo purposes. The tier ones and the automakers, they can actually set what the tolerance is. In other words, this image didn't come out perfectly. It's about 15% corrupt. Mm. And in this case, in the demonstration, what we said is, you know, that's okay in this case. Um, if I do this again, for instance, and I'll have a different uh, engine light come on, Here's one, for instance, where the image is very corrupt. Mm -hmm. And from a software perspective, we'll detect that automatically. We'll feed that back up to the cluster application, and then it can decide what to do. Mm -hmm. And those decisions are going to depend on the vehicle model and whatnot. But they can do everything from try to redraw it, mm -hmm. from maybe blank it out. Right. But the, the important thing is that a safety critical element of the cluster, we've detected it automatically in software. We're going to tell the application about it, and then the application can take action. And that mm -hmm. can be, as I said, blank it out, put it, try to redisplay it. It can also log that as well. So right. then you think about, oh, okay, <laughs> I've detected an error. Could be a software error, could be hardware error, could be something with the display, who knows? Mm -hmm. Capture that, report that back, and then uh, all of a sudden now I've got diagnostics uh, that I can proactively do something about, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so really, uh, really, I, it's, so, it's so exciting for me actually. Um, never get tired of this stuff, it's fun. <laughs> Moving the connected car forward. Exactly, exactly. Uh, can we crash it? Crash Can we cra well, let, yeah. want to crash it? Eh? Yeah, yeah, let's crash it. Okay. Yeah, let's crash so it. So here, just to prove that um, <laughs> there actually are independent systems. Here, I'll hit a button right over here. That'll be a reset button. As you can see, I've just reset the uh, the digital instrument or reset the infotainment system. Sorry, and what I've got here is my cluster. Obviously, is still operating just fine. So, you know, I'll get through some of the other. Uh, demos as well so here's another I'm just continuing the demo right. I had earlier <laughs> this one's very critical in the sense right. that um, I should be displaying an R <laughs> I'm actually displaying a P <laughs> not so good right. so again that's an example of where we've detected something which is completely wrong mm. um, and putting that up and and meanwhile I've completely reset my infotainment system as you can see it's it's coming back up now um, 
But again, keeping that isolation, which again, historical vehicles, you would have seen two ECUs with this consolidation, which is great, saving up on cost and whatnot and, and weight in the vehicle. It's, we have to make sure that we can completely isolate, separate, keep those systems secure um, in the case that where you know, you have issues with one that it's not gonna affect the other. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, hey, Grant, thanks a lot. You Always bet. a pleasure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, Likewise. And uh, here we are at CES. Make sure you uh, tune in for some of our other videos. It'll be probably not as good at this as this one, but <laughs> but but still good. Thanks. Bye. Yeah.